Okay, we've spent quite a bit of time going all the way back to January on gross grain sections, and including sagittal. And so here we can just point out all the normal anatomy here just on an MRI scan. Recall that a CT cannot do a sagittal image like this. So only MRI scans will get these nice sagittal images. So all of our no normal anatomies we've been going through here, medulla, pons, the tegmentum of the midbrain, the cerebellum back here, the fourth ventricle, and here we see the inferior colliculus, the superior colliculus, and the posterior commissure right above. Okay, the pineal gland would be right in here, but it doesn't show up to that at all. So this is the thalamus. This area right in here is the hypothalamus. And we pointed out several times all the things around the hypothalamus. The mammillary bodies, which really are a part of the hypothalamus. The optic chiasm, right here. Below it is the pituitary. All right, and coming up in here, this is the interventricular foramen of Monroe. So CSF is it gets from the lateral ventricle into the third ventricle, which is the space right in here, gets there through the brain of the row. And then we have the anterior commissure right here. It's called a pathway that connects the right and left uh, temporal lobe. Okay, so all of these things right around the uh, hypothalamus. Okay, then of course we have the corpus callosum. Okay, the genu or the bend right here, the body, and the very important spleen, which we can talk about next year, what that does, and why that's important clinically. But it is important. It's the spleen and the posterior part of the corpus callosum. Okay, and the gyrus that lies above the corpus callosum is the cingulate gyrus. And up here we have the paracentral lobule, okay, supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. Okay, and then the occipital lobe back here, so this is the parietal occipital sulcus and the calcarine sulcus. Right here. So, primary visual cortex lies right around this calcarine surface. 